at some point of time. Continuing judicial education is one thing which uh, the judiciary has been encouraging. But uh, my interest in uh, judicial education has uh, assisted me in interacting with uh, people from different uh, jurisdictions. And I can tell you that people from different jurisdictions have gone far ahead of us. We started in sometime in 2004, 2005, 2006. But if you go to the websites of some of these uh, judicial education institutes, the kind of strides that they have made over the last couple of years is phenomenal. But we are still, you know, in that lecture mode, uh, having a sort of a discussion and so on and so forth, uh, without looking at adult education, without looking at where we are going, why is judicial education uh, necessary. We are still looking at the CPC, we are looking at the CRPC and so on. What about uh, continuing uh, legal education for lawyers? Uh, have we looked at that? Uh, I'm sure the Bar Association uh, can play a very, very major role in that. And once we have this continuing legal education, things like strikes and so on and so forth can also be discussed. What is public interest in going on a strike? Somebody gets beaten up, a lawyer gets beaten up. They say, fine, it's public interest. Why should a lawyer get beaten up by the police? So there's a strike for about 80 days. The entire judicial system in the uh, state is paralyzed. The judges have to go to the jail to hear bail applications. So I think we need to look at uh, continuing judicial education, sorry, continuing legal education for lawyers also as one of the mandates of uh, the Bar Association and indeed of the uh, legal fraternity. Um, the last thing that I would like to say is looking at some alternatives, ADR. Today, uh, we will be honoring some persons who are uh, gifted in mediation, alternative uh, dispute resolution. What about uh, plea bargaining for uh, the criminal uh, justice delivery system? Are we looking at that? Are we encouraging that? We need to look at mediation, certainly, because the courts are overloaded. Arbitration is, uh, you know, a bit of a question mark in India. Mediation is a good alternative. It is efficacious. It is inexpensive. Uh, are we actually supporting it uh, in a big way? Uh, what about commercial arbitration? It has now become statutory in the Commercial Courts Act that you must have uh, pre-litigation mediation. Uh, it's all right. Parliament has passed a law. They've put the responsibility on NALSA. I happen to be the uh, executive chairperson of NALSA, and uh, nobody knows what to do. You know, we had a program where we called everybody, we called officers from the Ministry of uh, Department of Justice uh, to try and understand what is the role of NALSA. Nobody seems to know anything about it. So you have laws, you have good ideas that are coming up, but how do you implement them? I think we need a far broader discussion on many of these uh, issues whether it's reforms or whether it's ADR, whether it's mediation, whether it's plea bargaining, whether it's loka dalits, I think we need to have uh, far greater discussions on many of these issues. Uh, I hope the um, Bar Association of India takes the lead in this uh, because uh, I, I believe, I personally believe that the time has come that we need to act rather than just talk about all this. So thank you very much and uh, all the best. Thank you very much, Justice Madan Lokur. I would just like to respond very, very briefly to some of the very important issues which have been raised by uh, Justice Madan Lokur and particularly about the activities and working of the Bar Association of India. <coughs> uh, yes, legal education is no doubt very important. And I must share with you that we have given topmost priority to having a very active interaction with the law schools all over the country. I myself visit at least one law school every month <clears throat> and recently we have been, our teams have gone to say Kitts University, to Ahmedabad, to Jodhpur, 
to Guwahati, Kochi, and having all interactions and sharing our views, not only with the students, but also with the faculty members, because I think that is very important. The faculty should be made aware of the contemporaneous developments which are taking place all over the world, because profession, legal profession is not an isol isolated profession now. You see, you have to see what is happening in the other jurisdictions also. So there is a very active participation by the members of the Bar Association of India, and some of them sitting on the dais here, and some of them are that side. Legal aid, yes, we do provide. We get representations from members of the public, from citizens, that this is our grievance, how this can be redressed. Yes, our emphasis is not to encourage or promote litigation, but to give correct and proper advice. Therefore, the assistance is in the form of legal aid and advice, because we do believe that we have to promote settlements because I personally believe and I tell all my juniors also and members everywhere that a bad settlement is better than successful litigation, at least in India, you see, at least. Therefore, our idea is not to promote litigation. Its idea is to give correct and timely advice and we respond, you see, to the representations or the appeals or whatever queries are raised by the citizens from different parts of the country, and we do re respond to that. Yes, use of technology. What we are planning to do, and already this has been set in motion, we want to connect the, all the district bar associations in the country. And I think there are more, hundred, uh, more, more than about seven, 800 uh, bar associations, district bar association with the Bar Association of India, so that there is a very active interaction. They should know what we are doing, we should know what they are doing, and I think that will lead to a good and harmonious growth of the legal profession in this country. Yes, we may be lagging behind in technology as compared to the other jurisdictions, but we are not lagging behind in values, and I disagree with Honorable uh, Attorney General, when he says that we are, when I said, you see, that we are still a noble profession. I do believe we are still a noble profession and in competence, in terms of speed, in terms of efficiency, in terms of knowledge. I say with some daring certainty that Indian legal profession is second to none in the world, you see. And <laughs> yes. Honorable Justice Lokur also raised the issue about the uh, mediation. I do firmly believe that mediation is the answer. It is a fact that, yes, there are 3.5 crore cases pending. Therefore, litigation is not the solution. Arbitration has yet to take off in this country because it has become more expensive than even litigation, even more delayed, you see, than the litigation. Therefore, what is the answer? Answer is to have some sort of arrangement where mediate, trained mediators should be there. So we are collaborating with the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, having its headquarters in London, to have some programs of training mediators and arbitrators. And already, as our uh, colleague Sadhana will tell us, that mediation seems to be the answer because their diaries are full. Even today when I told her, you see, you come, please try to be there at 4 o'clock. She says, I'll definitely try, but you know, my, I'm, I'm in the mediation till 4.30 or so, but still I'll try to come. So that is the answer, therefore. I don't think the future is as uh, bleak as some of us may uh, project it. I think it is, it is quite bright, and we should look forward in a very positive manner to the growth of legal profession in this country. And those who are getting the awards are truly representative of the state of the legal profession in this country. Thank you very much. Anandita. Thank you, Justice Lokur. And also thank you, Dr. Basin. Now it's time for presentation of awards.
May I now request Justice Lokur, Justice Menon, and the Attorney General for India, Mr. Venugopal, to join us in handing over the awards to our um, um, leaders of the bar present today. Uh, going strictly by the alphabetical rule without strictly following any rules of seniority as such, now may I call upon Mr. Ashok Agarwal, Senior Advocate, Punjab and Haryana High Court to kindly come to the dais and accept the honor. May I also in brief read his uh, brief bio data, although all our awardees need no further introduction. However, Mr. Agarwal got his law degree in the year 1974 and he started practice in Chandigarh. Thereafter, he was designated as a senior advocate and he was also uh, the Advocate General of uh, Haryana in the year 2003, Advocate General of Punjab in the year 2011, and he was presented the Haryana Ratan Award in the year 2004. Mr. Agarwal, please. The next award is Ms. Indira Jaising, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India. <laughs> Ms. Jaising needs no further introduction except to say that she has always been the first. She was the first woman to be designated by the Bombay High Court. She was the first woman additional solicitor general of India. She is also the first woman to be receiving this award by the, installed by the Bar Association of India. And I'm extremely proud to be announcing her name. as I'm not only been her advocate as well as her junior at the same time, she has represented me in the crash matter and I have represented her in a matter by which we had filed a PIL for the designation rules to be formulated. So it's really a great honor for me indeed to be inviting Ms. Jai Singh. The next awardee for today is Mr. Koka Raghav Rao, Senior Advocate, Hyderabad. Mr. Rao has more than 66 years of practice. He has, he has produced many judges from his chamber. He is not only a senior advocate, he has also been an actor, a poet, a writer. And he has been awarded in all these categories by the state governments and various universities. He is now in his 90s and it's really a pleasure that he has come from Hyderabad to receive this award. Thank you, Mr. Rao. The next award is Mr. Mukul Rothegi, former Attorney General for India. He, of course, needs no introduction at all. He got his LLB degree in the year 1978 from Bombay University and thereafter he has been practicing in Delhi High Court in, in all courts in India. He was designated at the early age of 39 years and thereafter he, as we all know, he has attained heights in the legal profession. He has been awarded doctorate by the Fakir Mohan University, Odisha. He has been conferred LLD by the Amity University and he has been recognized, he has been a member of the eminent jurist as the selection committee of Lokpal. Thank you, Mr. Rathabh. Thank you. The next awardee is Mr. Pradeep Khaitan, attorney at law, on whose behalf I now request Mr. R. N. Junjunwala to kindly accept the honors. Mr. Junjunwala himself has been one of the awardees of the Bar Association of India. Mr. Pradeep Khaitan, is the senior partner of Khaitan and Company. He is on the board of directors of many important companies of this country. He has been an attorney at law, has been a gold medalist, has been on the various organizations, professional as well as other social and charitable organizations of the country. Thank you, Mr. Junjunwala, for accepting the award on behalf of Mr. Khaitan.
The next awardee is Mr. Rafiq Dada, Senior Advocate, Mumbai. Um, he got his LLB degree in the year 1964 and he was awarded gold medal. As Justice Lokur was referring, he has also taught in uh, Government Law College, Mumbai. He has been designated as a senior advocate in the year 1987. He has been the additional Solicitor General of India in the year 1994 and continued till in that capacity till 1997. He is a known name in the corporate uh, litigation sector. Thank you, Mr. Dada. The next award is Ms. Sadhana Ramachandran. It's indeed an honor to invite uh, Ms. Ramachandran, who has contributed a lot in the field of mediation, which was also referred to by all the dignitaries on the dais. And this is for the first time that the Bar Association of India has taken a conscious decision to honor a mediator, as has been rightly pointed out by all the dignitaries, that alternative dispute resolution is the way forward. Thank you, Ms. Ramachandran, for accepting this award. The next award is Mr. Sriram Panchu, Senior Advocate, Chennai. He's a distinguished mediator and has also been recognized uh, by the Honorable Supreme Court of India as an eminent trainer, as a distinguished mediator and one of the foremost mediators in the country. Mr. Panchu is also a member of NALSA. He is president of the Mediators India, a national association of mediators. He is on the board of the International Mediation Institute. Thank you, Mr. Panchu. The next award is Mr. Sudipto Sarkar, Senior Advocate, Calcutta. He is Associated Member, Six Pump Court, Temple, London. He got his LLB from Cambridge University, which was later redesignated as LLM because of the distinguished character of it. And he was called to the bar, to the Gray's Inn in the year 1973. His name is included as one of the prominent arbitrators. He is on the panel of arbitrators of Hong Kong International Arbitration Center. Thank you, Mr. Sarkar, for accepting this award. The next awardee is Professor Dr. Ranveer Singh. This is in the category of the law academicians, because as Justice Lokur has rightly pointed out, it is these professors, those who make the lawyers and the future judges of this country. Professor Ranbir Singh needs no further introduction. He has been vice chancellor for more than 20 years by now. So I don't think I need to inform anything further. Currently, he is the vice chancellor of the NLU Delhi. And he was also the founding director of the NALSA. Thank you, everyone. Now, there is one more very pleasant addition to the schedule of our program, which is the release of our the journal, which is published by the Bar Association of India uh, since 1961. The and, uh, and the title of the journal is The Indian Advocate. The current issue is, in fact, uh, a special issue which is on the theme of women and law. 
the editor of the uh, indian advocate journal is ms madhavi divan i happen to be the associate editor and we have got a team of very enthusiastic um, editorial board may i request all the dignitaries to kindly release the current issue of indian advocate and this issue is on women and the law and i would request madhvi to please say a few words please okay. 